Hey everyone, and a welcome to the third module of this Django course. Now, I've decided to focus on a um, debugging toolbar in this module because it allows us to understand a lot of concepts in Django very easily. So it's not very, not exactly conventional to be looking at a debug toolbar this early on in a course, but I find um, it has a whole bunch of built-in bits and pieces that just allow you to understand things quicker. So don't want to waste any time on this intro. Let's jump straight into it. Okay, so GitHub again. Uh, let's look at uh, main branches here. We want to look at module three. Okay, so module three, if you then look at steps and click on module three, we then have the instructions and the docs for this particular model. Right? Okay, so follows on from module two. So in the last module, so in the first module we got set up, we worked through the docs so we understand how these docs actually work. Then we set up some views and wired them up to URLs so that we could see something out of the browser. This module will be installing a toolbar. Okay. Bear with me. It's not something we normally do in our, kind of the third module of a Django course, but I think it's really beneficial. So let's do that. So the first part of these docs is always double check just to make sure that your configuration of di you know, directory configuration on your machine is exactly how it should be. So just look, look at VS Code. In fact, let me open it up in VS Code. Uh, there we go. There we go. So this is where we left off in module two. Okay, so these are the steps. Uh, this is the core app. So it's saying here, you need a core app and it needs to look exactly like I've got it here. I know mine is working, but just make sure yours is similar to this, right? So if I've missed out the PY cache or any init files, then just don't worry about that. You will have them as default. It's not like you need to add an init file or a PY cache. Just make sure that you've got these things all set up correctly. You've got Django course, media steps, V, E, and V. You've got all of these in your project. You will need them, okay? If any doubt, check out module three and pull down from module three, okay? So steps, please CD into your root directory and fire up a virtual environment. It will look like this. You see this in my terminal at the bottom here? V, E, and V, it's in brackets. It's because I've got the virtual environment running, okay? So make sure you also have, if you don't know how to do it, look at module one. So in the last module, we constructed our first view, our uh, first web page. In this module, we'll be installing a fantastic Django package that will help us understand how our web page is rendered. Okay, so this is really, really good. So let's use pip, pip install. Make sure you've got virtual environment running. If you don't, it will install it globally and we don't want that. Okay, pip freeze. Look, you're gonna get this error message. So I'll move that up a little bit. You get that error message. Look, you can just, let's go ahead and do it. Look, you can just copy this section here. Dump that in your terminal, and what that'll do, they'll just upgrade pip, and you'll not you'll stop seeing that yellow message. Okay, so it's up, uninstalling pip 21.2.4 and installing 22.2.2. Okay, that's all it's doing there. CLS, let's clear that. We've installed this, now we want to pip freeze that. So this is kind of what you want to do. Every time you install a new package, just run the pip freeze to requirements. What that'll do, that'll now add all of the new package configurations to requirements. You see, we've now got this. 3.6.0, happy days. So, settings. You will need to register the new package and adjust some settings in Django settings. Nice and easy, what I've done, I've just got all of this that you can copy and paste into it. So if you copy this, copy that whole section there, okay? Open up Django course and in settings, scroll to the very bottom, just paste it in there. That's all you need to do, okay? So what we're doing here, now I could add debug toolbar into the installed apps. So I could have added that right in here, yeah? So debug toolbar, yeah? Could have done that, of course I could, and that's fine. Um, however, I will say, if you add it straight into installed apps and then you push all of this code to a production server, you will have all of those apps in production. You might not necessarily want them all in production. Or you can just add certain packages to the installed apps if debug is true. So if debug, so if we're in debug or production, or sorry, development mode, we'll add debug toolbar to our installed apps. Also, we will add this to our middleware. So we want debug toolbar middleware to our middleware section. Remember I said we'll be adding stuff to this? That's exactly what we're doing. So if debug, we're adding some middleware to the bottom here. Good. Debug toolbar. Let me, do you know what? Let's open up the debug. A debug toolbar toolbar Django docs 
just let this open really, set tool. Okay, so these are the docks, okay? So you've got the configuration, debug toolbar configuration panels. Do you see that? Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so, you know, I'm not, I'm not just pulling this out of thin air. It's a third party package, all of them. If you're on um, PIP or Python Package Manager, you can get to the documentation and just take what you want from there. Okay, so I've just given you it because this is a course and I don't want to waste too much time going through some of the information. But that there, what you're looking at is the configuration that I'm using. Dumped it in there and then we're using internal IPs. So this is kind of the, the internal server IP address, which is needed. Just save that. Okay, next. Now you want to replace the static URLs. Okay, so static file section. Here, just this static URL, just replace all of that with this. Okay, so we need a static file with DIRS. Oh, look, see, we've got a little wiggly line there because I've got VS Code. It tells me something's wrong. It's because we need to import OS. So at the very top of your screen is where we import our import OS. So that's a Python package that's built into Python. So we can just put import. We haven't got to install it using pip. Just access to it straight from Python. And you can see now we won't have the wiggly lines. So from os.path.join, so we've got the base directory, which we've got in the Django settings file, static. So static, the directory static in our um, project will become our static file directory and also the media directory. We've already got the media directory. Okay, that's why it's there. Static URL will become this. Static root will become static files. So when we call collect static, which is a command in Django that will collect all of the static files from the project. Probably need to explain what all of these are, which I will do in a second or two. And it kind of consolidates them and puts them all into a directory called static files. Same goes for media files. So if we create a model, which we'll come onto in another module, um, and we have images or files or things like that in that actual database schema, then it will save those images into media files. Okay, so that is our media route. Okay, we'll talk more about static files in this course. It's kind of a difficult subject, but just make sure this configuration is the same as what you've got and it will just work and we'll understand it more throughout the course. Okay, also import OS. <laughs> and then what we want to do is we want to update our URL comp file. So, all right, okay, Let's open up URLs, URL comp. Remember, this is what we had in the last module we're updating it so we're now bringing in settings from django.conf so when you import settings that allows a py file so a python file to access the settings of this project okay that's how we're accessing it so down here where it says settings.static root that's how we're accessing the, stat the static root here because we've imported settings into the url file so we've imported settings django.conf import settings and django.conf URL static import static. Okay, so that's just a, um, a function or a class method, should we say, that we have access to. So you can see here we've added this. So it's a debug URL. So it says all of this in the uh, debug documentation that I showed you a moment ago. So we won't do a deep dive on that, but you do need to add it to your URL conf. And if settings.debug, which we know it is, we add these patterns to URL patterns. So this is the way you need just to wire up Django so that uh, we can render images or we can render um, CSS, so cascading style sheets or JavaScript files. So this is how we access static documents, static files and images into our project. This is the settings that you need, okay? So make sure that yours is wired up in the same way as this. Okay, so static and media. We now need to add a new directory to our project to handle static files. We will talk more about these later, as I keep saying. Add a static directory to the root directory that looks like this. Yeah, so go in here, oh, sorry, go here, new folder, static. So we need to do, okay? So now the project has the two files that we need. We're looking for static, we're looking for media. Static's here, media's here, it's already got some media defaulted into it. Migration. So in the last module and the module before that, when we were firing up the server, it was saying that some migrations weren't applied. We now need to go ahead and do that. Okay. So 
Migrations are Django's way of propagating cha changes you make to models. And models mean database tables. That's a Django term, it's model, it translates to SQL, database. So adding a field, deleting a model, etc., etc., into a database schema. They are designed to be mostly automatic, but you'll need to know when to make migrations and when to run them. A new instance will always have a whole bunch of migrations waiting to be migrated. So there's built-in stuff into our installed apps. Okay, so as soon as we start a Django project, there's a whole bunch of migrations that we need to migrate. You can do this by running this command, python manage.py migrate. Okay, what did that just do? Well, it'll say you'll see this in the log, right? So we are seeing that in the log down below. So it's applying all the migrations that we've got. You can see that we've got alter user, username, max length. So there's some database tables built into Django. One of them is the built-in user model. So we can access the user model to get users to sign up, sign in, change passwords and things like that. That's already built into Django. And we have access to it straight away in our installed app. So when we migrate, um, I do, our, do our first migrate, it migrates all of those database schemas built into Django to our database. Now our database is defaulted to dbsqlite3 because it was in our settings file, right? So where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? There we go, database. That's our database. That's what we've just said, migrate all of this information to our database. And our database is dbsqlite3. So it's created this file here. Okay, you won't see it. It won't show you anything because you need different configurations and setups. But that is what we've just got here. Now, if you had PostgreSQL, then it would, it would push all of those migrations to the instance of your database. That's how it works. And in which case you wouldn't get this dbsqlite3 file in your project. That's why I've got it. Every day, static, you can now use the command called collect static. That's what consolidates everything and puts it into a static files directory. So python manage.py collect static. Oh, that won't work. To make sure you weren't behind my head. There we go. And it'll say 140 stack, static files copied. There we go, static files. Now in there we've got the admin setup. Okay, so you need those files in static because when we look at admin in another module, it needs to access the CSS, the JavaScript, and everything else that comes built into Django. The debug toolbar, so that's what we've now collected all of those static files, CSS and JavaScript and everything else, template tags, everything now goes into that file in our static files. Now you can go through it all, but you can see your images. So there's some images in the admin page that you look at. Okay, great. We've got all of that. What are we now doing? So saying 135, actually we've got 140 because we've got Django debug. You should now have Django debug toolbar available in the browser. Now this is the last part of the module. So we'll just wind it down here. So we'll just fire up a server again. So it's Python. So yeah, let's just clear that. Python manage.py run server. Now, if you've got anything wrong in your code, it will say, eh, eh. computer says no, right? So the fact that it's just fired up, this you'll get used to this in your in your terminal. This is saying that it's running. It's saying that start a development server at 127.0.0.18,000. You can go there, or you can go to a local host, one or the other. So if you actually hold down control and click it, it'll open it up. I've got, I've got it open here, look. Actually, I'm gonna go in incognito, right? So I'm gonna open up a new, a new screen, control, shift, N, and then I'll go local host 8000. There we go, right, so um, same as we had in the last module, right? So welcome to our Django course. That's linked to the index.html page, which is in turn linked to the home view in our views file in the core app. That's how that's working. But now what's different is we've got this on the side, okay? You can hide it, so default it opens. You'll only see this if debug is true, okay? The reason I wanna show you is because it's got loads of fancy stuff on here. Actually, where does it stop behind my head? Now you can see login, there's not much else going on underneath it. And just make sure I'm not gonna show you the right stuff. So right now, okay, let's talk about it. So if you click in settings, it'll show you all the settings of the project in your browser, which is really, really helpful, right? So scroll down, you've got your date, time, input formats. These, these are 
what are in your settings file, but also there's a whole bunch of settings that are built into Django that you can overwrite in your settings file. So all of these, a lot of these are defaulted in Django, which you can then you know, use your own settings to overwrite. So you have a whole bunch of them, right? So these are all of the different settings in the project. Um, what I like, we won't go through all of them, have a little tinker, have a little play, and it'll hopefully it will show you some bits. Static files, right? So these are the static files that are being used to render this page. You haven't got much, right? So static file paths. So these are the paths. You've got static file apps, toolbar and admin. These are the ones that we wired into the URL. Then you've got the path. So these are all the CSS files. So Django Contrib static files finders. This is where it's looking for all of the different static files, okay? So you can see here, we've got site packages, Django Contrib. You've got all the CSS in Django. So it's actually automatically because in our templates, let me show you, excuse me, because in templates, where are we? Right, okay, so yeah, Django templates, right? So the back end and all of this here, it's looking for templates in uh, the back end and the app directories, which is true. So the directories for the apps, it's looking in them as well. That's why we're getting all of that CSS through, okay? What else have we got? We've got templates, this is helpful. So templates, so this template is actually core index. That's the one that's being rendered into the screen, which is really, really helpful. If you're uh, looking at a contact us page or a frequently asked question page or whatever, right? A user sign in page, you can go here, it will tell you exactly, if you're new to a project, it will tell you exactly where to find the template that you're looking at. It'll tell you all the context processes that are being used. Now we'll write a bespoke one in this course at some point, so it will show you that and everything that you're accessing. So you can access requests, so request.user, whiskey request. So this is the get request, doesn't make much sense. We'll go through in deep detail in that. And you've also got the context in this actual file. So debug is true. So we can reference the word debug as it, in the template tag of Django, uh, sorry, in the template as a Django template tag. So if debug true, render something. If not, render something else. You've got messages. We've got requests, which we'll have access to in every single page of our project. So this is why you've got cache, signals, you've got headers, whole bunch of stuff, right? Okay, probably too much information to take in at this time, but have a play because a lot of questions that you have about how things work and how things are rendered into a web page are answered in a debug toolbar. It's fantastic. Really, really changed the way I viewed a Django project, how I understood how things worked in a Django project. And that's why I wanted it to be included into this course so very early on in module three instead of module seven. Because in, in module four or module five, you might find that the answers to some questions that you may have will be in the toolbar rather than pausing the video and having to do research, right? So that is the end of this module. Let me just go back in here. And going here now. What have we got? Let's close the terminal. So this is the configuration of the um, your directory on your local machine, your root directory. You can see here, not much has changed. I know mine is correct. You've got static files, right? Oh, I just clicked that. I probably shouldn't have done. Yeah, I shouldn't have done. You've got static files. You've got static. These are new directories. It says here, new directory. Okay. So just make sure your local directory setup is the same as mine. Use the module three file just to make sure you're bang on before moving on to module four. Now, I like to have feedback on these videos. So please like the video, add a comment in the description, or sorry, in the comments below, because I do read them and I do get back to you. So if you have questions or anything like that, any feedback, bang them in the comments and let me know. Because it helps me create more videos of what you want to actually see. And lastly, um, subscribe to the channel, right? So I put com uh, content out often, once, twice a week. Subscribe and click the bell so you're notified each time. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next module. Thank you, bye-bye.